Elhamdülillah. Ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah. Ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve nuala. Ve eşhedü en la ilahe illallah. Ve eşhedü enne Muhammeden abduhu ve rasuluhu. Ve safuatuhu min halkihi ve habibuhu. Kad bellağ risalete ve edde l-amana. Ve nasaha l-ummete ve keşefe l-umme. Ve jahede fi sebebi dinihi hatta atahu l-yakin. Allahümme cizihi anna ve anu alilayna ve anil islami ve muslimin. خير ما جزيت به نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحينا على سنته وأمتنا على ملته واحشرنا تحت لوائه وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نضمأ بعدها أبدا We are continuing to cover the issue of the attacks on Islam and on Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Quran in which we believe. Last time we stopped at the uh, the similarities between Prophet Isaac and Prophet Ishmael as far as the Bible goes. They are both children of Ibrahim. They are both called sons of Ibrahim. Their mother are called wives of Ibrahim. So there is no distinction as our cousins would like us to believe there must be. Today we are going to cover a couple of issues. One is the similarity of the blessings and the rights Allah has given both of them. And last time we explained why this issue is important. It is important because our cousins believe that Isaac is distinguished and his children are the only children of the covenant. I want you to memorize this word. Covenant means mithaq. Allah has taken the covenant of the children of Israel. He has taken the covenant of the prophets that if a prophet comes to them from Allah, that they would believe in him, they would support him, and they would obey him. This is a covenant that Allah took from the children of Israel and their prophets. And all the prophets were given uh, the same privilege of holding a covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here is the book of Genesis, chapter 17, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to the Bible, uh, says, And Ibrahim said to Allah, if only Ishmael might live under your blessing. At that time, Ibrahim only had Ishmael. Because as we mentioned before, Ishmael was born when Ibrahim was 86 years old. Isaac was born when Ibrahim was 100 years old. So he is 16 years younger. Okay? So at that point, Ibrahim is talking about Ishmael because he's only, the only child he had at that time. Then God told him, yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son. So she has not given birth to Isaac yet. It's very clear here. And you will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. So in the previous lecture, we spoke about the covenant being given to Ibrahim and all of his descendants, your descendants after you. The same you will hear here again. As for Ishmael, I have heard you, which means I've heard your prayer. I will surely bless him. See, Isaac, I will, I will take a covenant with him. Ishmael, I will bless him. This is not the time to talk about this as a difference. I will just pass it as is. I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of 12 rulers and I will make him into a great nation. Now, Ishmael is being blessed, is being fruitful, is being given a promise from Allah to increase his descendants' numbers, right? All of these promises, except for the blessing, are not given but to Ishmael, okay? But then there is a covenant that Allah will be talking about 
with Isaac, which is uh, given to Ishmael before Isaac, because Ishmael was born first. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to him and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be you perfect. Be you perfect here means to be straight, to be upright, be obedient. And I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your seed after you. Now, Ishmael, uh, uh, Ibrahim at this point didn't have, didn't have Isaac yet. 99 years old is one year before the birth of Isaac. And your seed after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant. Okay? To be a God unto you and to your seed after you. So here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about his covenant between himself and Ibrahim. Between himself and your seed, Ibrahim's seeds, for generations which means their descendants and the descendants of their descendants and so on and so forth. Okay. So, the whole land of Canaan where you are now an alien. See the word alien? Canaan in Arabic is Canaan. Canaan is said to be the beginning of the children of Ibrahim who would become the Arabs. Okay, so you are now living as an alien, and as an alien, I will give you an everlasting position to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. He didn't say to your son Isaac, he didn't say to your son Ishmael, he said your descendants. Okay, and the covenant is not to hold the land as a position forever. But we'll see what the covenant is. Then God said to Abraham, as for you, you must keep my covenant. You must keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you, for the generations to come. So as much as they keep my promise, I keep their promise. They keep their commitment, I am keeping my covenant with them. So this is a reciprocal relationship that Allah is holding with Ibrahim and his descendants, which means Isaac and his progeny, uh, Ishmael and his progeny, all of them. So what is the condition for this? This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, the covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. Of course, does this constitute the whole covenant? No, it does not, because women are not expected to be circumcised here. It's only male, right? Every male among you shall be circumcised. Circumcision was taken as a commitment or a show of commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is not the covenant. Allah doesn't have any interest in our foreskin, whether you keep it or not. But it is a required means of purification and cleansiness. That's all what it is. So what are the conditions then of the covenant that means something to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Here the Lord says, shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Seeing that Abraham shall come a great, shall become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Who is the source of blessings for all the nations? Is it the descendants of Ishmael, the Muslims, right? The followers of Ishmael and his father Ibrahim? Or is it the children of Israel? Who are the greater number that the Bible is talking about? I will make him a great nation. Who is having his religion as open as Islam, to accept anyone who's interested to be a Muslim, to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not 
the children of Israel. But let us read what this means. So, as it says here, shall I hide? The answer is here in verse 19. No, for I have chosen him that he may change, t charge, I'm sorry, that he may charge his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice. So is it the foreskin that is the covenant or is it doing righteousness and justice? It is doing righteousness and justice. This is the covenant that Allah is holding the children of Israel to, the children of, of uh, uh, Isaac, the children of Ibrahim, the children of Ishmael, all of us are held to one and the same covenant. So as you could see, the covenant is not a covenant of privilege. It is not a covenant of being distinct above anyone else. Allah doesn't take interest in our ethnicity. He created all of us as peoples and nations and tribes so that we may get to know and respect and benefit from each other. This is the rule. What does this have to do with the attacks on the Prophet It has to do everything with the attacks on the Prophet We know if you are an observant of what happens between nations before and during wars, you will find that the community targeted for a war is always demonized and dehumanized before the war. You remember Saddam Hussein was the fourth largest army in the world, which means greater than Great Britain, France, Germany, the European Union. Can you believe this? So demonization and fear mongering is the tool for war. So this section of the Bible is very significantly important because excluding Ishmael from the covenant and excluding his children from the covenant is a means to say that Muslims are following a false prophet. So don't recognize their religion, don't have to respect their religion, and we have people here, here in this country, one of them has been uh, forgiven or pardoned like the turkey of the Thanksgiving a few days ago, he used to stand and say in public lectures that Islam is a cancer that must be excised from the human body. He has been just pardoned with the turkey in the past few days. I don't need to dignify his name. So, dehumanization and delegitimization is a means to rally your enemies against you. This is why we're saying, if they were truthful to their own book, they would respect what their book is still saying until today, despite all the changes they have done to their book. But this is not their problem. This is our problem, that we are not holding them to their book because we're not studying their book, but they are studying our book to use it against us. They have established centers and universities and departments to study the Quran, the Hadith, the Sunnah, just to challenge us, to delegitimize our religion, to demoralize us as faithful believers in the Prophet Sallallahu and in our book. So this is very central to the conflict or the struggle between Muslims and their cousins, the children of Ishmael and the children of Jacob and Isaac. So the covenant is about righteousness and justice. It is not about bragging, I am the chosen people. You are chosen like every human being Allah chose to send the message to every human being. So he has chosen Adam, and he said this in the Quran, إن الله اصطفى آدم ونوح وإبراهيم على العالمين. Allah has chosen 
Adam, Noah, and Ibrahim above the whole world. To be what? To be distinguished, to make status for them? No. It is to respect the message they carry to us. So, regarding the topic we have been covering for several weeks, the Quran tells us in Surah At-Tawbah, إِلَّا تَنْصُرُوهُ فَقَدَ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهُ إِذْ أَخْرَجَهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا If you do not support him, Allah has already supported him. Who picked the Prophet وسلم, from Mecca to Medina and protected him other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who told him even that he has been given the permission to leave Mecca, the birthplace of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu So it is Allah. He told him to leave, he told him where to go, and he told him what to do, and he went by the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah protected him. So Allah said, if you don't want to support him, listen, Allah without you supported him. إِلَّا تَنْصُرُوا فَقَدْ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهُ إِذْ أَخْرَجَهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا As the disbelievers kicked him out of his homeland, ثاني اثنين إذ هما في الغار He was one of two in the cave. إِذْ يَقُولُ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ As he told his friend Abu Bakr, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't grieve. Don't panic. لا تحزن. Why? إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا if you believe and feel that Allah is with you, you should never worry about anything. When does Allah become with you? When you are with Him. Our relationship, as we always keep repeating with Allah, is a reciprocal two-way relationship. You accept Him as your Lord, and He will accept you as His servant, and as you do submit to His will, he will use his will to support you. In Tansurullaha Yansurkum. So our support for the Prophet is just one way to express our love and faith and belief in him. What should a Muslim do to show his or her support to the Prophet? This is a, an extensive topic, but I'm gonna go quickly through these points. Number one, call unto the path of your Lord with wisdom and good preaching. Without da'wah, we are jeopardizing the very existence of ourselves. Our very existence is at risk. And I don't know if I told you or not, I have been watching videos that came to me from friends in, uh, in Europe and in the public. You could see it also on the internet, lots of these videos showing Muslim sisters in France being attacked by reckless people because they have been demonized. They have been labeled as terrorists. They are breeding young baby terrorists. So a sister, more than one by the way, walking with her, her children in the park, and a person would jump from her back, jump with his feet stretched, and kick her in her back on her face in the ground with all his force. And it's like a cow, not a human being. And she fell, and she was trying to, to stand up. She could not. She wanted to protect her own children from this attack, and she barely made it to her children, and he was still kicking her. Another one walking in the street, in front of public places in the store, uh, in the street, stores in the street, and people are going and coming, and another similar attack by another cow. And she fell on the ground, and it looks like she did not even make it. She did not move. And these are just two examples of many. And unfortunately, we Muslims have been duped by the talk about human rights and freedoms 
and all of this, which are only disguise and cover for the reckless Western dehumanization of Muslims and abuse of their trust. When they lived with us as Muslims, we took care of them, and we are still taking care of Christian minorities in the midst of the Muslim lands, everywhere, despite the propaganda. I went to several Muslim countries, and I attended church services and sermons, and some Muslims were there to attend. Nobody's attacking them. Nobody's kicking their women in the streets. Nobody is mistreating them because of what they believe. If Muslims were trying to exterminate Christians who were a minority, Christians would not have existed today in the middle of the Muslim land. So we have to be careful not to accept all what you hear in the media, in the propaganda, on YouTube, and everything else. You don't have to believe everything you see. Unfortunately, everything could be fabricated. But the point here, number one, is make da'wah because your survival as a human being is at stake. Your faith is at stake. Your children's faith and existence is at stake. And if you do not do this, blame no one but yourself. So da'wah is the first way to believe, to show your belief in the Prophet ﷺ. Then reply to false allegations. Don't let any false allegations stand. The ones you don't answer, they stand as true. So we need to support organizations like CARE, MLFA, and other organizations that are standing on our behalf to speak truth to power and to challenge false allegations. This is not a promotion for care, but these are the organizations that are standing to defend our legal rights and our civil rights. So reply to false allegations. If I can't reply myself, I look for somebody who is replying, I support them. That's at least what we can do. Spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give a Quran to a friend. Give the biography of the Prophet to a friend and let them take responsibility and make their own judgment. Whether they want to believe or not, it's not your role. Your role is to teach. But if you keep the book hidden at home or in your car or on your phone, you have not communicated the message. Do you know what Allah says to the Prophet about this? He says, Ya ayyuhar Rasul, Ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik, fa in lam taf'al fa ma ballagta risalata. O Messenger of Allah, convey the message of your Lord. And if you do not, then you have not uh, sufficed the commitment between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about if he does? Allah says, Wallahu ya'asimuka min al-nas. The, the result of da'wah is isma, protection. If you do da'wah, Allah will protect you. No matter who is conspiring against you. Very important. Very, very important. Then be an example. Practice your Islam to the fullest. Don't bend your back. Don't lower your head except to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Turn away from the ignorant and the wrongdoers. Don't engage those types of people. People who argue for the sake of argument. People who don't have but no ears, don't argue with them. Boycott those who attack the Prophet and be patient. Inshallah, next time we'll talk about the upgrade and the development of a boycott plan that should work not only for France, but for all others who are doing similar wrongdoing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our heart for Islam and help us spread Islam, learn Islam, and practice Islam.
الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله Just have one side point but not very side it is important uh, We all must have heard the hadith cited by President Biden during his campaign Did anyone pay attention to this? He said, the Prophet of Islam tells us if anyone sees something wrong, right, let him correct it. Right, let him change it by his hand, if he can, if he can't, then by his tongue, speak against it. And if he can't, at least by his heart, denounce it and tell people that this is wrong, okay? So why am I citing this? It is not to talk about Biden being good or being bad. It's again to talk about us. If he is giving himself the authority to use our traditions to attract our votes, then let us apply this tradition and tell him, Mr. Biden, racism is wrong, correct it. Mr. Biden, discrimination against minority is wrong, corrected. It is within your hand. Occupation is not only a sin, it is repugnant, it is demonizing the other humans, it is wrong, we want you to fix it. Israel that you love is one of the biggest historic mistakes the West has ever made against humanity. Correct it. If you mean to use the hadith of our Prophet, then it is on us to hold your feet to the fire and tell you, be a man, commit to what you want us to commit to. But this is not about talking negatively about Biden. I, I have nothing to do with evaluating anybody here. All what I'm saying is he used our tradition. We want to tell him, based on what you said, this is what we want to tell you. You have the power to correct what we don't have the power to correct. Do your part, we will do our part. We will support your good efforts. But we are not giving anybody any carte blanche. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, guide our hearts and open our hearts for the truth. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt. Wa aafina fi man aafayt. Wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Wa qina wasrif anna sharra ma qadayt. اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا وإذا أردت بقومنا فتنة فنجنا منها مولانا غير خزايا ولا مفتونين ولا مغدلين ولا مغيرين اللهم لا تدع لنا في يومنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا مبتلا إلا عافيته ولا سائلا إلا أعطيته ولا فقيرا إلا أغنيته ولا مظلوما إلا نصرته اللهم انصر عبادك المجاهدين في كل مكان اللهم عليك بالجبارين والظالمين والمعتدين فإنهم لا يعجزونك أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فستذكرون ما أقول لكم وأفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد وأقم الصلاة